everybody. Judy here with the White Pigeon Library, and I am once again here with my friend Ramsey Idris. You may remember him from the B program that we did that was so interesting last summer. Well, it's springtime now, and um, Ramsey also has a, an interest in mushrooms, so we are going to talk about his process for cultivating shiitake mushrooms today. Thanks for being with us today. You're welcome. We appreciate it. You're welcome. This looks really interesting. First of all, can you talk a little bit about the shiitake and why it's something that you like to uh, cultivate? Well, you, I read an article in a magazine. That's what got me interested. Um, and it talked about growing shiitake mushrooms on logs at home. And I thought to myself, I've got logs. I've got water. All I have to do is buy the tools. So I got a book and I read on it and um, ordered and some ordered some spore. Went and cut a bunch of white oaks the first year. This is going to be my fifth spring. Although I don't know, I have so many logs that I don't know if I'll do any this spring. I have plenty. So okay. um, yeah. So is it the mushroom itself that you you love the taste of, or is it it's I, also the kind of the hobby? The it's kind of the hobby. It was interest. Yeah. It was interesting. Like let's try something that mm -hmm. not too many people are doing. Um, I like the taste of shiitake mushrooms, and if you buy them, and if you've ever bought them in the store, and you buy the dried ones, they're never the same as yeah. the fresh ones, and they cost a lot. They are expensive. And, I'm uh, a mushroom fan too, and it's one of my favorite. It, I don't get them very so, often. So. Yeah, I just grow them for fun, and uh, it keeps me busy. Just okay. like bee, just like bees. There's, uh, you know, unless you're a commercial grower or you have a commercial bee operation, it's not. That you're going to retire off of mm -hmm. it. It's just a hobby. Enjoyment. Yeah, it's just a hobby. So this so, is the beginning of the process, I'm assuming, and and these will not bloom until later this year. They won't. They won't fruit. Well, shiitake won't fruit for 12 to 14, 15 months, depending okay. on how it colonizes, how well it colonizes the log. It's been a spring thing. We do it in the spring. Mm -hmm. We order in the spore, and they send it to you, and it comes in a brick, and you can order different sizes. It's not that expensive. And, um, you but keep, you won't you, have mushrooms from from these until this is last year's log, and uh, I was going to show you the process of how we get to this point. Okay. So All this right. one will fruit this year. Okay. Um, and depending on if it's a a uh, warm season or a cool season, it'll depend when it fruits, and the weather too plays a big role in how much moisture we get. Three days of rain, and the logs just kind of do their own thing, right. and they'll fruit like mad in about five to seven days after Neat. three days of rain. Sounds so like fun. I love watching things just disappear. They grow and the harvest is, is large and we do a lot of drying mm -hmm. and we do a lot of giving away. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so this is where you start then down here? Yeah, this is where we start. So you can buy, I, I use an angled grinder because it's so much faster uh, um, than you could use a drill and drill the holes. So you drill holes and then we buy in the spore that's mixed with sawdust. There's different ways to do it, but that's how we do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we put it in that tool, inoculating tool, after we drill the holes and we fill them and we seal them. So we use this and you might want to, this thing will throw chips everywhere, so okay. you might want to stand back. So you said yeah. this is white oak. No, this is not. This is just a sample log of cherry that I just cut. Okay. This but is you just would for an want example. To do this into white oak. This particular well, mushroom. Are there different? Oaks are preferred. The, they, according to the chart. So I just go with what there's a chart that shows the different types of wood that works best on. White oak was ranked at the top, so okay. I got white oak. Gotcha. And all you need are the limbs, anywhere from two inch diameter to, well, I've done some eight inch, but the logs get really heavy. Mm -hmm. And you cut them into 36s or 42s or wherever you want to handle. And uh, these are a little smaller because it's just an example, that's all. So when you, you drill the holes, it's got an automatic stop, this particular bit. You can do it with a hand drill and just drill the holes. It's a lot faster than a drill. And again, the tools for this don't cost, well, the angle grinder cost you, but so now you've got holes. And then you take this tool. So this is kind of how I set up, too. I set up two rails, and I've got stops on the end so the logs don't roll off. And then I'll lay out a whole bunch of logs, and I'll just drill them all and roll them down to the next station. And then we'll take this. How many of these logs would you typically do in a... In a year. I've done uh, 80 logs 
at a time, That's and a it takes mushrooms, it? it's a lot of logs, and yeah. it takes a long time to get them all because you th all those little holes. So you'll have the spore, and you'll take this tool, which has got a hole in the end. See, it picks up the sawdust, mm -hmm. and then you'll put it into the hole. Oh, so it just pushes it. It right pushes down it in, in, fills it up, yep. and you do all the holes, and then you'll take. Um, you can do you buy these. These actually work really well. They're just looks like Peter Cottontail. Mm -hmm. They call them daubers and you've got the cheese wax all melted and hot, sizzling hot. So when you put it on it actually sizzles. I mean it's liquid and it it seals up the plug to keep the moisture in. All right. So and and that's the process and this is what you end up with. And then on the ends uh, I use so a little So this would be all ready to go into a a shady place to sit and wait for it's exactly right. A good year. It's, it, you don't leave that out in the sun because you got to keep that moist for the summer, fall. You mm -hmm. you need to water it, and I set up a little sprinkler, and we we'll go back to the mushrooms are back there, and uh, I sprinkle it once to twice a week. I just put it on a little timer, and the sprinkler goes off All and right. keeps them moist. And are you can. There, what about bugs? Is there anything that would destroy those? There are bugs. You know, I've come back and I've seen that the holes have been cleared out. And I haven't been able to figure you don't out know why. What it is. It's yeah, be it, small, though. yeah, it doesn't. It, well, there's chipmunks back there too, so they they do whatever they do. Yeah. And, and sometimes the slugs get on the mushrooms, but we can talk about that when we get back to the okay. mushrooms. But then you can track your progress. So the whole idea is to super inoculate with spore the log, and then the mycelium grows off the spore, and you'll get. And I don't know if you can make the it out. You're mycelium. Using analogy, I don't know. So the mycelium is. Uh, it's the spore grows in simple in, terms. In simple terms. <laughs> <laughs> fungus. I don't know okay, what the simple term. I don't know what the simple yeah. term is, because that's like the roots. Let's call it. That's what colonizes the log, takes over the log, and feeds on the on the wood All in the right. log. Okay, and then when it gets to a certain point, it'll fruit. That's the mushroom. Okay. So the mushroom is just the fruit. It feeds Period. off the mycelium. Right, the, it grows off, off the of it. So the spore, mycelium, then the fruit. So and that the mushrooms will come right out of these holes. They'll fruit right out of the oh. openings. Yeah. So we can go back to the log yard and talk about the next step, which is basically stack them and keep them warm. Okay. Warm. Sorry, keep them wet. Yeah. Wet I'm and warm. Sure, I'll have a couple more questions for you too. Sure. All right. Go back to see yeah. where you put these logs after they've been inoculated. Right. So I have a spot that I cleared out. It's underneath these white pines ahead of us. Whoops. And uh, it keeps them shaded in the afternoon so they don't get uh, too dried out. And then I run a sprinkler off my hydrant. Okay. Um, and I just run a garden hose. It's a very simple setup. Little log cabin. It's like little log cabin. So there's different stacking methods. This is more the winter stack. So you'll take your logs and you put them in a stack. And I put my sprinkler in the middle and I try to sprinkle them all. So there's different, there's four different kinds of shiitakes in here. Uh, they have labels on the end and uh, there's different years on the end. Okay. Um, different size shiitakes, uh, flavor, yeah, I guess there's a little difference. I'm not that subtle. I think your palate's probably better than mine. Um, but they're shiitake mushrooms right. and that's what all these are that are in here and some of those. Now that pile is last year. Which down at the end? Yeah, those, those, that big pile there where that's sitting on those six by six timbers. Okay. And then I will take these and restack them for the summer into this type of pattern. Because, so, so this one, you see how it's high up and there's space in between it? Yes. Okay. So when they fruit, I can reach in and I can pick the fruit. Um, the first year I ran through example, I had a cable that ran down through here, and when the logs start to fruit, you can stand them up like a teepee. Oh. So you stand them up, and then they would fruit from the sides, and um, you know, of course, go to the sky, gravity. Um, but this is—I I found that this for me this works better because now I can just walk up. I don't have to move the logs three times because I would end up mm -hmm. picking them up and standing them up, and then they fruit, and I put them. So if I use this kind of stacking method, it works just fine. Okay. So, so are it's, these all the same? There's probably different varieties of shiitake? There are. Correct? There are. There's, there's four different kinds in here. 
So there's warm season and cool season. I tried to get a variety of different fruiting times. Um, so in cool season, you'd fruit more in the cool weather. The fall, the fall in here is, is mushrooms everywhere. Yeah, and all these stacks. So I put these stacks down for the to keep them close to the ground for the winter time, a little moister and protect mm -hmm. them a little bit. The snow covers them a little a little better. And um, how many years will a log produce? So three to seven years, depending on. So some of these, yeah, some of these over here, those are white oak. Um, those are some of the first logs I did, and this is going to be their fifth year, and they're still fruiting. So when they run out of food, and we'll call it food, when they run out of uh, uh, supply, I guess, I, you know, technically, um, they'll stop fruiting, and then they're done. I'll You'll just, just uh, I'll just, they'll just stop fruiting. And you can see some of them are, are getting pretty bad. And you can tell uh, they get light too. They're they're not heavy anymore. You pick these up, and you can tell that they're just there's not a lot left. And those down there, you see the difference. Now those are poplar, and those are oyster mushrooms. Oh. So those. They get done in maybe two years, maybe three years I got out of them. They fruited a little bit last year. I imagine they'll be done this okay. year. So you, you, it's the same technique exactly? Exactly the same. A it's mushroom on logs. There are all sorts of other techniques. Mm -hmm. um, that one book I was showing you a little earlier, um, you can fruit them in your kitchen in a bag. Okay. And you can buy the bags already inoculated, ready to go, and you'll get them and they'll fruit right there in your kitchen. So, so pretty or, much all these all these logs need is moisture all, from here on out. Correct. All right. Correct. Seems like moisture. A pretty, pretty easy thing to it, grow and once you've got it. Once you get going, yeah, the tools aren't that expensive. It takes more. It's it's more labor intensive because you got to go cut the wood. Mm -hmm. um, now these down here, there's some mulberry logs. That's the little second batch. Now these are not shiitake. These are shiitake. But these are lion's mane, oh, so we use. Tell me about those. I've heard about those. Yeah, it's a, and they have not fruited yet. So I'm hoping that this spring we'll get lion's mane. It's supposed to be good for your health. Okay. And um, are they big that's mushrooms? A, they're pretty large. Really? Yeah, pretty large. So and they, if you look up lion's mane, it's it's very different. I mean, it's just a. Okay. It doesn't look like a typical mushroom. Thing. Doesn't look like a button mushroom like you buy in the grocery store. Yeah. Everybody buys the button mushroom. What would you do with? So, it? Would you eat those? I mean, could you make soup out of it? Um, yeah, and we dry them. We take mm -hmm. the mushrooms and we have a dehydrator. And when they're in harvest, and if we can't give them away, because uh, or eat them, we'll just dry them and okay. put them in one gallon bags and put them in the freezer. Them. Yes, we'll reconstitute them. Water or a little soy sauce with some water, just mm -hmm. so they flavor them a little bit, and, nice. uh, and then use them in soup. Do you and plan spread on them doing out. a lot more this spring, or are you pretty well set for mushrooms? I would think I'm pretty well set for mushrooms. <laughs> so, but you've got more room. I have, I have more room, but I'm pretty well set. Yeah. Mandy and I were talking about mushrooms on the drive over, and uh, she brought up morels. She likes to go morel hunting. Yeah. Can you cultivate morels? You know, in that book, they talk about cultivating morels, but I don't think it's widely done. No. I think it probably could be, but I don't think I it's think widely it, done. Yeah, if, maybe so. if it were easy, a lot of people would do it, I'm sure. There's so, got to be yeah. a reason why it's not. I guess maybe so the process. This is a lot. After. This is a pretty simple process, mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of sprinkler and some tools. So, and then you can take these. And one last note, I guess. So they will fruit naturally. We talked about it. you get three days of rain come fall mm -hmm. or in warm late summer fall, and this will be just mushrooms everywhere. And I'll be picking five gallon buckets of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. But you can take I use those stock tanks over there, and if you soak the log for 24 hours in cool water, and then take it out, it'll fruit in five to seven days. So it's like a forced fruiting. So, so if you the want log that you did today. You no, do that with? no, it's no, be, it's oh. still, yeah, it still has to go 12 to 15 months before okay. you can do that. So it's always, I'll do them this spring and I wouldn't soak them till next summer. So everything I've got here, I could soak and mm -hmm. force. So it's like force, force fruiting. Yeah. And, and then you got to let them rest after that. In another seven weeks, you let them rest. You can't force them and force them and force them. You got to let them rest. So and that only works after that 12 to 15 month time period. Right. So. 
So Make if sure. somebody, um, a total novice, wanted to get started, what would you, where would they go? How well, they I, got, I got started with Spore, with everything for less than $200 cost everything so uh, a block of I think it's two and a half pounds or that's the five and a half pound it's it's a funny size that they uh, maybe they're going by kilograms you know it's like twenty five dollars you can inoculate forty logs wow. so and the tools you know this is about thirty some dollars for the tools and the daubers and the wax so I got I the first year I did about eighty logs and I was less than two hundred dollars okay. to do and when you logs. figure these so, logs give you give you seven years of mushrooms that's yeah, it can be three to seven, but I, I think it's the size of the diameter, so there's more food, if you want to call it food, for the the uh, mushrooms, the bigger the, the diameter. Bigger the so they seem to last long. If they're small, they're done in two to three years, but the, the larger you get this size log, which is four inch or so, five inch caliper, and that'll last five plus years. Mm. So, But it's not expensive. It's just cheese wax and a couple of tools. Okay, it's fun. Well, yeah. I went from knowing absolutely nothing about mushrooms to knowing quite a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, really it's, it, it's so fascinating, interesting process. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you for having us out here again. And You're welcome. Love to see these when they're blooming. So um, I'll probably have to take a visit out here. Yeah, in another month and a half or so. Okay. Cool. When the weather really warms up. Awesome. And, yeah. All right, so, thanks, Ramsey. Okay, you're welcome. Great as always. Thanks.